listening to Catholic Chicago on WNDZ 750 AM. Every Monday through Friday from 8 AM to 9 AM, the Archdiocese of Chicago presents programming about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Thanks for letting us be part of your morning. Now again, Catholic Chicago. Welcome to another installment, another broadcast of Diakonia, a call to service. Diakonia, of course, is the Greek word for service. It's also the root word for deacon. My name is Deacon Richard Hudzik, and I'm privileged to serve the Archdiocese of Chicago as vicar for deacons in the office of the diaconate for the Archdiocese. I also get to work and pray with the good people in Westchester, Illinois, at Mary, Mother of Divine Grace Parish. And as is the norm for this uh, radio event, I have uh, joining me in the studio, the Associate Director of the Deaconate Office, Deacon David Brensick, and he's also uh, a deacon at... Uh, Holy Guardian work? Angels okay. Parish. Okay, and, wh and where is Holy Guardian Angels Parish? In wonderful Brookfield, LaGrange Park. Okay, so welcome, David, and welcome to all who are tuned in and, uh, and watching out there in, uh, in YouTube land. So this show is uh, uh, a quick half hour that the Archdiocese gives us uh, to share with you uh, some of the things that the diaconate in Chicago is, is involved with. And as we like to say, it's, it's a show uh, by deacons, but uh, it's, it's not to pat ourselves in the back. Um, it's uh, to, to exhibit to you some, some of our endeavors, and by in doing so, uh, hoping that you will uh, join us in some of these endeavors, some of this work of the kingdom. And joining us today in a, in a very, special, uh, very special project, uh, something that the deacons are involved with um, in, in, in terms of financial support, and that is we have two representatives from Nuestros Pequeños Hermanos, NPH, uh, our little brothers and sisters. And uh, joining us, uh, we have uh, Zooming in or uh, on Teams, I guess, uh, Mr. Chuck Allworth and also uh, Mr. John Deinhardt. So uh, welcome, Chuck and John. So Thank we've you. Got, Good uh, now on the screen, if uh, for those who are on radio, you don't, you don't get a screen, but if you're on YouTube, um, uh, on the left uh, is, is, is John, and then on the right is Chuck, if I got that right. Okay, so good. So, um, so we're delighted to have you. And again, uh, uh, these, these two fine gentlemen are from uh, NPH USA, Nuestros Pequeños Hermanos. Um, we want to get right into the heart of, of the show because there's, there's so much good that uh, NPH is doing. So we'll... Uh, we'll save some of the preliminaries uh, for the end if we have time for it. Preliminaries such as Chuck's and, and John's stories, but let's just get into uh, hit the ground running. NPH, what is it? Who are you? What do you guys do? Uh, when did it start? That that sort of background. Uh, whichever one wants you take the lead on that. How how about I start, uh, Deacon? Thank you, uh, and thanks again for having us. This is a, a treat. And uh, it's a pleasure for us to be able to kind of share this work. Um, as you mentioned, Nuestros Pequeños Hermanos uh, is Spanish for our little brothers and sisters. Um, we have been an international uh, care organization uh, serving vulnerable uh, children uh, throughout Latin America and the Caribbean since 
uh, golly, it's about 65 years now since 1954. Um, Nuestros Pequeños Hermanos, uh, or as we call it, NPH, uh, it's a mouthful I know to kind of get used to. So NPH uh, is a profoundly um, impactful ministry, an international ministry that's been transforming lives of children and families for Oh, 65 years, perhaps tens of thousands of families have, have been formed. Uh, tens of thousands of children have come through our homes and our services that we provide. Um, but perhaps um, I'll, I'll just let you know that today's uh, we operate in 10 countries in Central America and the Caribbean, including two homes in uh, three homes, I should say, in Mexico. Uh, we operate in Guatemala, Honduras. El Salvador, Nicaragua, Peru, Bolivia, uh, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti. We also run um, we also run a pediatric hospital, St. Damien Pediatric Hospital, the only uh, and the most sophisticated uh, uh, pediatric hospital serving the population in Haiti. Uh, I believe there's over 400 hospital beds, and. Um, as I mentioned, we operate in uh, uh, nine countries, and we have over 3,600 children who call an NPH home their home, and we serve over 3,700 children in surrounding communities through services like education, health care, and uh, uh, basic support for their families. So perhaps, Chuck, maybe you can kind of go into a little bit of our history. Uh, Sorry, sorry, Deacon. I don't mean to, to no, do no, your that's, job no, for that's, you. That's that's good. But be, before you go there, I've got a, a burning question. And is it is it Caribbean or Caribbean? <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm still struggling with New Orleans or New Orleans. Uh, so no, I, I, I that's couldn't Narland. tell you. That's New Orleans. Okay. All right, uh, uh, Chuck. We got we got two minutes before a break. So uh, let us let us know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, about that about that history. Absolutely, and, and and before I do, real quick, thank you uh, to all the Chicago uh, deacons, the diaconate and the archdiocese of Chicago for your financial support over the years. It really, truly does make a difference. Uh, we're very, very grateful for that. The organization started, as John said, in 1954. It was founded by an American priest, actually, who was ordained in the diocese of Cuernavaca, Mexico. And, and they'd been noticing in, that, uh, in his parish that the poor box had been, you know, had been empty uh, and that someone had been stealing from it, obviously. And then one day the sacristan in that church caught a young boy stealing from it, took that boy down to the police station. The police called Father Wasson, was his name, Father William Wasson, the priest, and said, do you want to come down and, and see this boy? Do you want to prosecute? And Father said, well, I sure would like to talk to the boy. His name was Carlos. And so Father went down there and talked to Carlos. And um, Carlos told him that uh, you know, he'd stolen because he was hungry. He was living on the street. And the police were like, well, yeah, but he stole. And Father, do you want to prosecute this young man? And Father said, no, I don't want to prosecute him, but I'll take him and treat him as my own son if you'll let me. And the police thought that was a pretty good idea. And they thought it was such a great idea that they gave him eight more kids by the end of the first week and 32 more by the end of the first year. Wow. So uh, fast forward uh, to today from 1954 and uh, over 20,000 children have, have called our home, one of our homes, their home. Um, it's a beautiful story. It really does bring in uh, a couple of the, the, the several uh, beautiful works of mercy uh, in terms of visiting the imprisoned. That's what Father Watson did when he went to see Carlos. And so that beautiful corporal work of mercy and then uh, the spiritual works of mercy in terms of forgiving offenses and bearing patiently those who wrong us. Uh, that's exactly what Father did. And so it's a beautiful beginning to our, our organization. You know, it has shades of uh, uh, Les Mis, uh, Les Miserables, where we've got, uh, you know, the, the bishop reaching out to, is it Jean Valjean? Is that the, the character mm -hmm. who's yes. stealing the, the candlesticks but uh, changes his life? So we're going to go to a break right now, and then we will be back to pick up the story of NPH USA. Are you able? Are you able? For I have come not to be served, but to serve, to give my life if you wish to be the first to my 
Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, Catholic Charities has continued to respond to the needs of people who come to us for assistance. More than 850,000 meals and food parcels have been offered to those who are struggling with food insecurity. Over 108,000 homelessness prevention hotline calls have been answered. Over 22,000 people have received mental health services and $2 million in financial assistance has been provided to keep people housed. If you or someone you know needs assistance, email us at gethelp at catholiccharities.net. That's gethelp at catholiccharities.net or call 312-655-7700. That's 312-655-7700. Before, during, and after COVID-19, Catholic Charities is here for you. I feel special. <laughs> I feel great. I got good grades. We've seen a huge surge in our kids now meeting or exceeding grade level. Come check us out. You may have never thought we were an option before. a call to service. Deacon Richard Hudzik joined uh, uh, as usual with uh, Deacon Dave Brensick here with me in the studio. On the line, on the uh, internet connection is uh, Mr. Chuck Allworth and Mr. John uh, Deinhardt, uh, both from Nuestros Pequeños Hermanos. I just, I'm, I'm stretching my, my, my tongue here, but I'm not a Spanish speaker. I know some Latin, but uh, uh, NPH, uh, in, uh, is is the acronym uh, our little brothers and sisters? So we were um, getting acquainted with NPH and and where it's uh, where it's operating. Uh, I guess I'd, maybe it'd be helpful for the uh, for the audience for us to to drill down a little bit further. Um, I guess one question is you know why are you where you are you know why these countries or we why these cities and then secondly. What goes on at these uh, the, the various facilities that that uh, that you do have? So, so e either one of you take a take a stab. John or, or Chuck? Like um, I'd be I'd be happy to start. Okay. Um, so, uh, where do we operate? I think we mentioned we are in nine countries. Why why, why uh, there? Why why those? Um. Our home started in Mexico and um, for nearly 30 years were exclusively in Mexico and then uh, moved into and saw emerging needs across Central America into Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador. And really the reason for those is the number of uh, challenges in each of those areas. You can see families and children suffering from extreme poverty, from social unrest, um, think about the conditions today, even in Haiti and in Nicaragua. Um, and uh, just as a side note, uh, I believe it was even Mother Teresa who came to Father William Walker and asked him to open our home in Haiti. Mm. So we are simply responding to the needs uh, of these children and these families in such difficult circumstances with lack of access to health care and education. Uh, gang activities. Every country has very significant challenges. I think this was certainly part of Father Wasson's mission and ministry to um, to respond to these needs uh, in any way that we are able to, uh, following his gospel call. And candidly, um, it, the name Nuestros Pequeños Hermanos comes from Matthew 25. It comes from Whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So in that way, Nuestros Pequeños Hermanos, our brothers and sisters, 
is a respond to that gospel call. What kind of services specifically are you offering to these children? You know, um, to, to couch it in a, in a much broader context, I mean, certainly we, we offer services. Uh, we have um, fully uh, functioning uh, homes that these children call homes. Uh, there are numerous children um, in our home who have safety, security, food, shelter, clothing, complete care as if it were a family, as if it was their own family, access to education. Um and uh, service and an opportunity to give back to our family. But really, if you captured it in a broader context, it's, you know, I think we offer an opportunity for transformation, transforming their lives and giving them hope for a brighter future. So um, perhaps Chuck, you can talk a little bit further about maybe some of some of uh, the actual work within the home. So John, actually you did touch on it a little bit in terms of some of the residential programming that we offer and, and really think of it not in terms of single family homes. John mentioned the word homes. Don't think in terms of a single family home. Think more along the lines of a boarding school, you know, and what does a boarding school have? It has dormitories and medical clinics and uh, dining halls and uh, playing fields. And, and that's what we have. We have these campuses uh, uh, that, that, you know, where these kids uh, uh, live. But beyond that, then there's all the other services that we offer in terms of our, our outreach to the community. And John touched on one big one a little bit earlier in terms of our St. Damien Pediatric Hospital in Haiti. Um, and so providing an, an actual, you know, a state of the art hospital service to children in that in that very uh, impoverished and, 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 you know, challenged um, nation. Um, but beyond the healthcare is also community outreach in terms of educating children from the communities surrounding our homes and educating them in the schools that we run. And so we're running schools in most of our homes, elementary schools and sometimes even secondary schools, um, where we're educating our own kids who are living in the homes. But we're also educating literally thousands of kids from the local communities, needy kids that are being educated um, and receiving a free quality um, uh, private education um, in, in, in our schools. Um, we provide daycare services for, uh, for, um, uh, for parents in the community. So really a wide, wide variety of, of different types of, of, of services that we offer. All right, I want to get, uh, I've got, we've got uh, two minutes until a break. And so um, I want to ask, you now, Chuck, you are Midwest region chair, director. Uh, you have responsibility for a Midwest region of NPH USA. And John, you are the executive director, CEO of the, the entire enterprise, if, if I got that. Now, what's now, Chuck? What's what's your role in 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 the organization? So I'm a I'm a fundraiser uh, by profession. That's what I've been doing for um, pretty much my entire career, and so I lead the fundraising efforts for an eight state region in the in the in the Midwest of 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 the U.S. And so all of the the fundraising, all of the events, all of the the sort of the friend raising and fundraising efforts that we have in that eight state region is what I um, you know, am, am responsible for. Okay, so if we our listening audience wanted to connect better with NPH, um, are you the guy they want to reach to? Correct. They can reach me. They can find me on our website. They can uh, they can go to our website to make a gift. Um, and uh, but I'm happy to. Uh, um, you know, to, to respond directly to anybody who might have questions. Um, and um, callworth at nphusa.org is, my, is my email address. Okay, we'll, we'll put some of those links in the, uh, in the show description. And we're going to go to a break, and uh, we'll come back and, and finish up uh, the beginning of the introduction of the tale of NPH. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Caring 
adults make all the difference in the lives of adolescents. Catholic Charities understands this, and our mentorship program provides a free opportunity for youth living in Lake County to spend time, virtually, with volunteers who genuinely care about them. This program is ideal for youths age 9 to 12 who may need support navigating the challenges of childhood and early adolescence. Our amazing volunteers serve as friends and role models who help youth recognize their strengths and empower them to reach their full potential. Catholic Charities conducts a thorough background check on every volunteer, and our program coordinator closely monitors and supports each relationship. Mentoring is a fun after-school program that is totally different from remote learning. Virtual group sessions help youth enjoy fun activities with their peers, too. We're connecting youth with great role models. Join us today. To learn more, call 312-937-3375. That's 312-937-3375. Hey, it's Timothy Johnston here from Liturgy Training Publications. Over the past few months, I'm sure you've found yourself at home more, whether it's working from home or watching live stream masses on Sunday mornings. As we begin adjusting to this at the beginning of the pandemic, one of the things I missed the most was gathering with friends at the parish. That's why we at LTP have created this new virtual gathering series called Living the Sunday Word. We meet virtually on Thursday evenings each week and reflect on the upcoming Sunday readings. And with that, we share stories to help us more fully reflect on the Word of God. I'm inviting each of you to join us, a group of friends meeting virtually from all parts of the country. So visit ltp.org for more information and to register. You won't want to miss this. And we are back for the third and final segment of Diaconia called a service. Deacon Richard Hudzik joined with uh, joined here by uh, Deacon Dave Brensick, and we have uh, on the line uh, Chuck Allworth and John Deinhart, both from uh, Nuestros Pequeños Hermanos. We're talking about this wonderful uh, outreach, this international outreach, serving children and communities uh, in uh, Central America, South America and in two spots on the island of Hispaniola, uh, Dominican Republic, and in Haiti. Um, I just want to ask, I'm going to turn this over to Dave in a, in a second, but I wanted to ask, on your website, you've got something called the Church Partner Program. I'm, th I'm wondering if that's an entree for us to, to become involved in the work of NPH uh, in, in a more substantive way. What, what, what is the Church Partner Program? Uh, well, in a, in a word, um, well, I probably can't say it in a word because it means so many things. <laughs> uh, and we are partners with numerous Catholic churches, numerous churches across the United States, including in the Archdiocese of Chicago and right here at my own local parish in, uh, in East Tennessee. Uh, we partner with, it's a large part of our outreach and our connection to the work um, of NPH in uh, working with local parishes. So as a, for instance, we might have some of the children that we, uh, that we serve come and visit with the parish in what we call pequeño tours. The children, we call them pequeños, uh, would come and perform and sing in the choir oftentimes and put on dance uh, recitals. That's a really fun and excellent way to kind of share our cultures. We do sponsorship drives. We host mission trips. Um, there's opportunities to have speakers come to your church. Uh, like I said, my local church has been involved with NPH for uh, nearly 15 years. We have over 100 sponsoring families. We have a number of visits uh, and a number of folks from the community, from our parish, who go and visit our homes. So we find it, uh, and I expect many parishes find it extremely rewarding and, and meaningful to connect their ministry to this international ministry and demonstrate kind of the reach of the of the universal church. Yeah, that I'm a, it, it puts a face on uh, on the outreach. It's uh, uh, it, it makes it more real. I, I think um, we we can be isolated here, but this 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 looks like an entree to 
to further and deepen a relationship with uh, uh, with the good work that you're doing. So I'm, you know, I will put links on that up as as well on the uh, in the description of the program. Um, it, it it sounds wonderful, and I'm encouraged to hear that uh, we've got uh, uh, churches in the archdiocese uh, working on this, and we're also proud that. Uh, uh, is now Bishop uh, Ron Hicks that he was uh, he was he was part of your uh, where he was in El Salvador is that where he was it he was the regional director for all of our homes in Central America so we have in Nicaragua Guatemala Honduras and El Salvador he was living in El Salvador but coordinating uh, uh, all of those four um, national programs for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. And I'm was with us for five years. And by the way, I, I should also add, you know, the Archdiocese of Chicago has been a, a wonderful uh, partner with us, not only with allowing uh, then Father and now Bishop Ron to to join us, but you know, for the past probably close to 36, 37 years, Father Phil Cleary, a priest from the Archdiocese of Chicago, has has been chaplain at our home in uh, our NPH home in Mexico. Mm. Father Jim Hurlbert, currently okay. uh, a, a pastor here in Chicago, uh, was the pa was the cha uh, chaplain at NPH Guatemala. And Father Jose Carriaga, uh, a, a relatively young, uh, a newly ordained priest, has been at our home at NPH Honduras, being a chaplain there for the past couple of years. So oh, okay. we really are grateful to the Archdiocese for. Uh, for for sending us these great priests. Well, that's terrific. Let's let's mm -hmm. build on that. I'm going to turn this over to Dave. He has he has some uh, some questions uh, for you of a of a spiritual nature. Well, you know this certainly sounds much more that this is your job, but it sounds like this work is so much more than that. How has this work with NPH affected you, you personally, John? Uh, well, would you like to start? Sure. You know, for me personally. NPH is right in my wheelhouse. You know, I, I graduated college with double majors in a uh, 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 double major in Spanish and international business from St. Norbert College, actually up in Wisconsin. And and uh, I'm able to use my my international academic background. I'm able to use my Spanish every day uh, in in my work. It's an amazing mission that people want to support uh, once they once they learn about it. And uh, you know I've. I've been in the working world since 1980, and the past 12 years uh, of, of of that time uh, have been with NPH USA. It's the the longest tenured job I've ever held, and and best job I've ever had. That's good. And and, and Deacon, for, for me, um, I, I uh, as they say here in Tennessee, uh, I wasn't born here, but I got here as quick as I could. I, I wasn't uh, I wasn't born a fundraiser, and, and but I I, uh, I I got to be one uh, pretty quickly. Uh, I spent 25 years in sales and marketing, actually you're selling um, dog food at one point and canned beans for a, a long period of time. And during that course of time, I made a visit to one of the NPH homes in 2008. And that visit truly transformed my life. I read a book, uh, a small little book from um, Henry Now on a spirituality of fundraising. And I really felt called to uh, working in the fundraising space. Uh, I responded to a call from our local bishop here, and I left my professional job and was the director of stewardship and strategic planning for the Diocese of Knoxville for the last eight years. But all during that time, I served on the national board of NPH USA and on our endowment board and truly felt uh, this as a faith response, uh, truly understanding my call and trying to to utilize what I think God has asked me to steward my gifts toward um, providing for these uh, beautiful children and their families uh, in so many ways. So I find it the most rewarding and fulfilling thing that I've, I've ever been blessed to do. Great. If I could just add real quickly onto that, um, you know, sure, my job as a fundraiser is to raise money, but, but I do that by helping people to be charitable. And so in many ways, I view that, uh, the helping people to be charitable as a ministry. Um, and it's a ministry that's very much supported and, and underpinned by, by Catholic teachings around almsgiving as being a form of prayer or and as a work of justice that's that's just pleasing to God. All right, Chuck and Wonderful. John, thank you so much. Uh, you hear that uh, the bumper music uh, telling us to uh, draw it to a close. But God bless you both. It's it's great, and I, I look forward to deepening the relationship of of the diaconate and all the people in Chicago with this this great work. So thank you both. Thank you, Dave. Um, God bless you all.
Thanks, Chuck and John. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. God bless you. At my right hand or at my left is not for me to give but for those for whom it has been prepared it will